The meeting will start shortly. Thank you so much for joining. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the virtual public meeting for the Southwest 40th Avenue Mobility Improvements Project from Sterling Road to Griffin Road. Um, today is Wednesday, August 4th, 2021, and we are currently on slide one. Moving on to slide two. So my name is Rebecca Guerrero. I am the Community Outreach Specialist with the Cordino Group. I will be the moderator and presenter for today's meeting. Our meeting format will consist of a presentation question and answer session that's going to take place between 5.30 to 6 and again from 6 to 6.30. An unguided PowerPoint slideshow is going to play if time allows. Moving on to slide three, the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including the Title VI of Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either our District 4 Title Coordinator, Sharon, or our Statewide Title VI Coordinator, Jacqueline. All questions or inquiries will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. Moving on to slide four, all attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. All attendees are welcome to submit questions or comments using the GoToWebinar control panel at any time. A member of the team will respond during the question and answer session. The virtual public meeting is being recorded and it will be available afterwards on the project website as well as submitted via email to all registrants. Moving on to slide five. So the GoToWebinar control panel should appear on your uh, right hand screen and questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address directly. There's also a hand raised icon where the blue arrow is pointing. If you um, would like to ask your question verbally, you can go ahead and raise your hand and that'll notify the team to unmute you. Um, also the red arrow is pointing to the uh, chat box. You can type your question in there and click send. This meeting is being recorded and it's gonna be posted to the www.d4fdot.com website. Moving on to slide six, the virtual meeting orientation. Dial-in attendees are in listen-only mode. And if you experience any technical difficulties throughout the uh, virtual public meeting, please contact the GoToWebinar support at 833-851-8340. Slide seven. So the project team. Presenting along myself today, we have Matthew May. He's the construction project manager with DOT. We have Andres Diaz, the senior project engineer with Castillo Engineering. We have Fazo Qureshi with the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization, also known as the Broward MPO. We have Joel uh, Jera. He is the construction project administrator also with Castillo Engineering. We have Noir, who's the engineer of record um, and designer. He's with the HSQ uh, group. And we have Kenzot Jasmine. He's with FDOT Design. Moving on to slide eight. Please enjoy the project video, which includes all information on the improvements to be completed, along with the road and lane closure information. We will start the question and answer after the video session. Slide nine, project overview. The purpose of the project is to create enhanced bicycle and pedestrian access. The length of the project is one mile long. The contractor is the Stout Group LLC. Construction is starting August 6, 2021. 
estimated contract cost is $3,377,160. Contract time is 466 calendar days, but that does not include any weather and holidays that might get added to the contract. And the estimated completion date is spring 2023. Slide 10. Good evening, everyone. My name is Basil Qureshi. I'm the Mobility Projects Manager at the Broward MPO. Uh, we are the entity that is funding this Southwest 40th Avenue improvement project. Uh, as many of you may be wondering who the Broward, Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization is. We are a federally chartered entity responsible for transportation decision making in the Broward region. We help influence the expenditure of federal and state transportation funds at the regional level. We are governed by our MPO board, which consists of elected officials from 31 municipalities, Broward County, Broward County School Board, and the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, which is also known as the Tri-Rail. We help develop plans, conduct studies, establish initiatives and programs for the Broward region. Our mission is to collaboratively plan prioritize and fund the delivery of diverse transportation options. Our vision is our work will have measurable positive impact by ensuring transportation projects are well-selected, funded, and delivered. Next slide. Slide 11. Many of you may be wondering where did the Southwest 40th Avenue corridor project originate from? Well, it was identified in the 2035 Long Range Transportation Plan, which is adopted by our MPO board in December of 2009. Moving forward, all of our long-range transportation plans, which is also known as the LRTP, will be known as the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, aka MTP. Some of the project objectives were to improve multimodal connectivity along the corridor, provide access to transit service, and to improve ADA access throughout. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to the construction team. Slide 12. I'm Matt May and I am the FDOT construction project manager. Project improvements. Widening the roadway to accommodate five foot bicycle lanes in each direction, providing continuous sidewalks on both sides of the road. Installing a bulkhead wall with a traffic railing at Lake George. Upgrading vehicle and pedestrian signalization at Griffin Road. Milling, resurfacing and replacing pavement markings. Now we are on slide 13, and my name is Andres Diaz, and I'm the senior project engineer for this project. Here we have a Google Earth image with the proposed project improvements overlaid. This is at the location of Southwest 40th Avenue and Sterling Road. Now we're on slide 14, and again, we have a Google Earth overlay of the proposed project improvements, roughly, between the streets of Southwest 54th Court and Southwest 54th Street. Now we are on slide 15, just north of Southwest 53rd Street in front of the Academy. And at this location, we will be shifting the crosswalk a few feet to the north for pedestrian and school access. Now we are on slide 16. And continuing north, we are at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and Southwest 51st Street. Now we are on slide 17 at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and Southwest 49th Court towards the south end of Lake George. Now we are on slide 18 at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and State Road 818 Griffin Road. Here, we will be adding an additional left turn lane, upgrading the pedestrian crosswalks, adding two mass storms, and updating the pedestrian features. This is slide 19. I am Joe Algero of Castillo Engineering, field engineer for the project. Uh, this is a typical section from Sterling Road to roughly about Southwest 50th Street. And here we have uh, one a northbound and one southbound lane with the widening for the bike lanes and continuous sidewalk throughout the project. This is slide 20. We have a typical section from roughly about Southwest 50th Street to Griffin Road. And here we have the two left turning lanes towards Griffin and one right turning lane. 
We also have the bike lane windings on north and south direction, sidewalks, and a bulkhead wall on the west side running along Lake George. This is slide 21, a typical section of Griffin Road. We are lengthening the left turn lane from Griffin westbound to southbound on Southwest 40th Ave. By lengthening the turn lane, the storage capacity will be increased. All right, we are on slide 22. This is the final configuration for plan at the intersection of Sterling Road and Southwest 40th. We have the green bike lanes at conflict, conflict points. This is a location between Sterling and Griffin Road. And this is the location for Southwest 40th, just south of Griffin Road. Slide 23, maintenance of traffic. Public safety is our top priority. Advanced warning and project signage will be placed throughout the construction corridor. Lighted message boards will be located at the northern and southern project limits. Ongoing coordination with local agencies and businesses to ensure bus route accessibility and access at all times. Some of the agencies that we are coordinating with include Broward County Traffic Engineering Division, the City of Hollywood, the City of Dania Beach, First Responders, and Broward County Schools. Slide 24, maintenance of traffic and lane closure details. Single lane closures are permitted weekdays between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and weekends between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pedestrian access and access to all properties will be maintained at all times. Additional lane closure information will be provided in the weekly traffic report distributed by FDOT. Slide 25, community outreach. So for more information on the project, you can go to the project specific website that's located at www.d4fdot.com. There we will post link closure information, any additional pertinent information about the project and even progress photos. If you'd like to be added to our link closure distribution list, please feel free to contact me at 954-940-7605 or via email at rguerrero at cordino.com. Moving on to slide 26. So we've reached the question and answer portion of today's meeting. Again, the red arrow is pointed at the uh, question pane. You can go ahead and type your question in there and click send. Or if you'd like to ask your question verbally, we can go ahead and unmute you if you click the hand raised icon. We can also go back to any slide if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Again, you can also ask your question verbally and just click the hand raised icon um, or type it into the question pane. Okay, seems that we have a question. So first question we have is, Southwest 40th Avenue, a city, county, or state road? Um, Southwest 40th Avenue is a city road. So some information on this project is the city had put in an application, the city of Dania Beach put in an application with the Broward MPO who had allocated uh, federal funding for the project. And the Department of Transportation um, 
designed and now we're constructing the project on behalf of the city. Another question we have is what impacts can residents uh, expect to their driveways? Um, Joel, you wanna go ahead and take that question? Yes, so there will be impacts to the driveways throughout the project due to the five feet widening for the bike lanes and the reconstruction of the driveways. We will have ongoing communication with all the owners and associations before, during, and after the, this operation takes place. And however, access will be maintained during non-construction hours uh, from this construction operation. Access to property will be maintained at all times uh, and we'll coordinate uh, individually with the uh, property owners and residents uh, when, when the time comes for their driveway to be rebuilt. Absolutely, and that's where I come in, the community outreach specialist. Um, we'll make sure that we go to your property, leave you a notice, and we'll coordinate that work um, around a schedule and a time that, that is convenient for everyone. But you will be able to access your property at all times. Another question says, are green bike lanes being installed throughout the corridor? Um, Andres, do you wanna maybe answer this question? Yeah, sure, I'll take over. So as a part of this project, we are actually installing bike, regular bike lanes throughout the entire corridor of Southwest 40th Avenue. However, we will only be installing the green bike lanes at conflict points along 40th. And these conflict points are locations where you're expecting to have interactions between the bicyclists and the um, motorists. So only at specific locations throughout the project will we be installing the green bike lanes. Yeah, just to add to that, so the, the, the bike lanes will be continuous on both sides of the street for all the way from Sterling to Griffin. And in addition to that, we will be uh, completing sidewalks to make them also uh, continuous from Sterling to Griffin on both sides of the street. So you'll have continuous sidewalk on both sides of the street and continuous bike lane on both sides of the street after we, we are finished. Seems we have a question that says, when will the removal of the trees begin and will greener, uh, greenery be replaced? Um, Andres, do you wanna take this question? Yes. So the tree removal is one of the first operations um, that is expected to happen in the project once the project begins. Um, so we're looking at within the next uh, three to four weeks, the contract is expected to start the the tree removal. And as a part of this project, we are not installing any trees or any landscaping. Correct. However, and green uh, areas will be, oh, go ahead. Green. Oh yeah, so um, uh, for, for all the places that we will be impacting, we are going to be um, placing sod, sod in those locations Correct. at the end of the project. Also, um, for any of the landscaping, since landscaping is not covered by our federal funds, 
um, the city always has an opportunity to budget for additional landscaping once this project is completed. Um, I would strongly urge that you talk to your to your elected officials in the city of Daniel and and they can uh, budget for a project in two years from now when this project is completed. Does that answer your question, Cynthia? Perfect. So we have another question that says, how, uh, how about parking? As I have a circular driveway with parking, will I still be able to park my vehicles? Um, Andres, Joel? Yes, so you will always, I have a quick follow-up. You're talking the circular driveway within your property. If that's the case, then yes, you will always have access uh, to your driveway and still be able to park on your property. And when it comes time to working on the driveway or your specific driveway, we'll reach out to you ahead of time um, so that we can both plan accordingly. But you will have access to your property and will always be able to park within your property. Any other questions or concerns or any other slide you'd like us to revisit? Um, we can definitely do that if you have any questions. Um, Cynthia is saying parking after the fact, our driveways will still have our drivers will have sidewalk. Is that a is that a problem for parking? Um, 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 I can just take a stab at this really quick. So um, all of our improvements are being done within the public right away on certain areas where you may cons where you make where your driveway uh, is existing. Some of your driveway is within the public right away. So our improvements are going to be done in the public right away. It may affect it very possibly may affect uh, your parking. However, it's not gonna affect any of the parking that's within your own property. Um, it may be a little bit more difficult to park in swales and whatnot, you know, on the side where, where, the, where there used to be a lot more greenery since we are gonna be doing some sidewalk and bike lane improvements. However, anything that's strictly within your own property will not be effective for your parking situation. Cynthia, is your concern um, that with the new sidewalks and having a circular driveway that you won't be able to have access in and out of your property? Also, something that we can do is if um, I can reach out to you after our public meeting today. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. It says we have four vehicles that now will have to relocate to grassy areas, not driveway. If the, if the vehicles are on your property, they don't need to. They won't need to be relocated. I, I can't imagine. I don't know of any area where people are parking in the right of way, or nor should they be. So. Um, 
we're not redoing your whole driveway. We're only doing uh, project improvements within the right of way adjacent to the street, not far beyond the sidewalk. That's the only area that's going to be uh, impacted. Your property will not be impacted. So as long as your vehicles are on your property where they, where they should be, um, there won't be any effect. Correct. And one of the things that we can do also is I can reach out to you after a meeting. And if you uh, provide us your address, on, uh, the team and I will be more than happy to look at the plans and maybe set up a meeting with you separately. And we can show you exactly what's going to be happening in front of your property. Yeah, we can do that. I have something to add. Maybe it could be misleading that when we say driveways, you know, somebody, someone might think that they're actually working on the driveway all the way up to the door of their house. Maybe that's her concern. But we'll, we can definitely look at, you know, the, the driveway, her driveway and the property, the area in front of her property to, to see if if it is within the right of way or, or if it is you know, if she's parking her cars within her property or not. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll follow up with Cynthia after the meeting and, and we can meet with her about that. Um, we also have one more question that says, what operations can the public expect the first two weeks of construction? Um, Joel or Andres, which <laughs> who'd like to answer the question? I can go ahead. So as Andres has had stated before, that one of the first operations will be the removal of the trees, which is part of the clearing and grubbing of the area. And additional to that, we will be installing, well, the contractor will be installing sill fence and, and inlet protection at drainage structures as part of the stormwater pollution prevention plan for the project. So those two will be the, the main operations within the first two weeks. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Oh, I see Carol, you have your hand raised. Um, I can go ahead and unmute you. Carol, if you go ahead and unmute your mic, you should be able to unmute yourself now. I'm sorry, Carl. No. Hello. I, I believe my concern is the same one that Cindy has. That's that's our house we're talking about. And okay. uh, by put it right now, I know we're in the it's in the right of way, but our driveway goes from, from the road into our circular driveway but the right of way goes all the way up to where our canopy is and then we're going to have sidewalks and bike trails across that which we're not going to be able to park across we're we're going to have to figure out how to park different or something i don't know what's going to how that's going to affect us so i guess when you come to meet them i guess we'll discuss that a little bit better Yes, what we can do is the team and I, we can meet uh, with you on site with the project plan. So that way on the field, we can show you where what where the sidewalk is going and what's going to be happening in front. Um, we have no issue with meeting with you and, and showing you that. Okay. We're aware of where it's going, so I know it's going to have some negative impact, but I guess it's just progress. <laughs> 
Thank you, Carl. Any other question or something you might have? Well, will the city allow us to change our driveway to the side road, maybe? Uh, that would have to be a question for the city. I knew that already. Thank you. Well, I can pass that along if you'd like. Okay. When when we when you come out there to see us, we'll figure out what our options are anyway. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Sure, and uh, and uh, we can also provide them the contact of um, uh, who's the main contact from the from the city of Dania Beach to that uh, property owner too. Um, when you guys go out there and and meet with him or her. Okay, let's see, any more questions? Anybody else have their hand raised? All right, thank you guys so much for joining our first portion of the, of the virtual public meeting. We're gonna go ahead and enter uh, the second portion of the meeting. Well, before we head on to the second portion, I'm sorry, um, slide 27, here's the contact information for everybody on the project team. Uh, you have myself, Rebecca Guerrero, the Community Outreach Specialist. My email is rguerrero at coordino.com. My phone number is 954-940-7605. We have our construction project manager, Matthew May. His email is matthew.may at fdot.state.fl.us and his number is 954-940-7519. Also, we have uh, our senior project engineer's contact info. His email is adiaz at castilloeng.com. His phone number is 305-400-8240. And then lastly, we have a city of Dania Beach. Um, their contact email is engineering at daniabeach.com. Uh, I'm sorry, daniabeachfl.gov. And then the phone number is 954-924-6808, extension 3883. And this concludes the first portion of our meeting. Thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and enter our second portion of the meeting. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. We're currently on slide one. Thank you so much for joining the second portion of the Southwest 40th Avenue Mobility Improvements Project from Sterling Road to Griffin Road Virtual Public Meeting. Moving on to slide two. My name is Rebecca Guerrero, and I will be tonight your moderator and presenter. Uh, I am a community outreach specialist for the project, and I work for the Coordino Group. Our meeting format consists of a presentation and question and answer session. We just finished the first session, which took place between 5.30 and 6 p.m. We're currently in the second portion, which is 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Moving on to slide three, the Title VI uh, of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the District 4 Title VI Coordinator, Sharon, or our statewide Title VI Coordinator, Jacqueline. And their information is here on the screen and all inquiries or concerns will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. Moving on to slide four, all attendees will remain muted throughout the meeting. Attendees are welcome to submit questions or comments using the GoToWebinar control panel at any time. A member of the team will respond during the question and answer session. And this virtual public meeting is being recorded. It will be available afterwards on the project website as well as submitted via email to all registrants. 
slide five, the go to webinar control panel should be appearing on your right hand of the screen. Questions and comments can be entered into the chat uh, feature for the team to address directly. Uh, the blue arrow is pointing at the hand raised icon. You can go ahead and click that. That'll no, uh, notify the team that you'd like to ask your question verbally. And like we did previously, we can go ahead and unmute you and you can uh, ask your question. Uh, the red arrow is pointing at the chat box. You can type in your question there and click send. This meeting is being recorded, as I said earlier, and it will be posted to the www.d4fdot.com website. Slide six. So dial in attendees are in listen only mode. Um, if you experience any technical difficulties, please contact uh, GoToWebinar support at 833-851-8340. Slide seven, the project team. So presenting along myself today, we have Matthew May, who's the FDOT construction project manager. Also Andres Diaz, he's the senior project engineer with Castillo Engineering. We have Fazo Qureshi, he's with the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, organization, I'm sorry, or known, also known as the Broward MPO. Uh, we have Joel Jera. He is the construction project administrator, and he's also with Castillo Engineering Inc. We have Noir, who's the engineer of record and the designer with the HSQ Group, and Ken Zot Jasmine. He's with FTOT Design as well. Slide eight. Please enjoy the project video, which includes information on the improvements to be completed along with the uh, road and lane closure information. We will start the question and answer session after the video. Slide nine, project overview. The purpose of the project is to create enhanced bicycle and pedestrian access. The length of the project is one mile long. The contractor is the Stout Group LLC. Construction is starting August 6, 2021. Estimated contract cost is $3,377,160. Contract time is 466 calendar days, but that does not include any weather and holidays that might get added to the contract. And the estimated completion date is spring 2023. Slide 10. Good evening, everyone. My name is Fazo Qureshi. I'm the Mobility Projects Manager at the Broward MPO. Uh, we are the entity that is funding this Southwest 40th Avenue improvement project. Uh, as many of you may be wondering who the Broward, Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization is. We are a federally chartered entity responsible for transportation decision making in the Broward region. We help influence the expenditure of federal and state transportation funds at the regional level. We are governed by our MPO board, which consists of elected officials from 31 municipalities, Broward County, Broward County School Board, and the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, which is also known as the Tri-Rail. We help develop plans, conduct studies, establish initiatives and programs for the Broward region. Our mission is to collaboratively plan, prioritize and fund the delivery of diverse transportation options. Our vision is our work will have measurable positive impact by ensuring transportation projects are well selected, funded and delivered. Next slide. Slide 11. Many of you may be wondering where did the Southwest 40th Avenue corridor project originate from? Well, it was identified in the 2035 Long Range Transportation Plan, which is adopted by our MPO board in December of 2009. Moving forward, all of our Long Range Transportation Plans, which is also known as the LRTP, will be known as the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, aka MTP. Some of the project objectives were to improve multimodal connectivity along the corridor, provide access to transit service, and to improve ADA access throughout. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to the construction team. Slide 12. I'm Matt May and I am the FDOT Construction Project Manager. Project improvements. Widening the roadway to accommodate five foot bicycle lanes in each direction. 
providing continuous sidewalks on both sides of the road, installing a bulkhead wall with a traffic railing at Lake George, upgrading vehicle and pedestrian signalization at Griffin Road, milling, resurfacing, and replacing pavement markings. Now we are on slide 13, and my name is Andres Diaz, and I'm the senior project engineer for this project. Here we have a Google Earth image with the proposed project improvements overlaid. This is at the location of Southwest 40th Avenue and Sterling Road. Now we're on slide 14, and again, we have a Google Earth overlay of the proposed project improvements, roughly between the streets of Southwest 54th Court and Southwest 54th Street. Now we are on slide 15, just north of Southwest 53rd Street in front of the Academy. And at this location, we will be shifting the crosswalk a few feet to the north for pedestrian and school access. Now we are on slide 16. And continuing north, we are at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and Southwest 51st Street. Now we are on slide 17 at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and Southwest 49th Court towards the south end of Lake George. Now we are on slide 18 at the intersection of Southwest 40th Avenue and State Road 818 Griffin Road. Here we will be adding an additional left turn lane, upgrading the pedestrian crosswalks, adding two mass storms and updating the pedestrian features. This is slide 19. I am Joe Algero of Castillo Engineering, field engineer for the project. Uh, this is a typical section from Sterling Road to roughly about Southwest 50th Street. And here we have uh, one uh, northbound and one southbound lane with the widening for the bike lanes and continuous sidewalk throughout the project. This is slide 20. We have a typical section from roughly about Southwest 50th Street to Griffin Road. And here we have the two left turning lanes towards Griffin and one right turning lane. We also have the bike lane windings on north and south direction, sidewalks, and a bulkhead wall on the west side running along Lake George. This is slide 21, a typical section of Griffin Road. We are lengthening the left turn lane from Griffin westbound to southbound on Southwest 40th Ave. By lengthening the turn lane, the storage capacity will be increased. All right, we are on slide 22. This is the final configuration for plan at the intersection of Sterling Road and Southwest 40th. We have the green bike lanes at conflict, conflict points. This is a location between Sterling and Griffin Road. And this is the location for Southwest 40th, just south of Griffin Road. Slide 23, maintenance of traffic. Public safety is our top priority. Advanced warning and project signage will be placed throughout the construction corridor. Lighted message boards will be located at the northern and southern project limits. Ongoing coordination with local agencies and businesses to ensure bus route accessibility and access at all times. Some of the agencies that we're coordinating with include Broward County Traffic Engineering Division, the City of Hollywood, the City of Dania Beach, First Responders, and Broward County Schools. Slide 24, maintenance of traffic and lane closure details. Single lane closures are permitted weekdays between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and weekends between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pedestrian access and access to all properties will be maintained at all times. Additional lane closure information will be provided in the weekly traffic report distributed by FDOT. Slide 25, community outreach. So for more information on the project, you can go to the project specific website that's located at www.d4fdot.com. There we will post link closure information, any additional pertinent information about the project and even progress photos. If you'd like to be added to our link closure distribution list, please feel free to contact me at 954-940-7605 or via email at rguerrero at cordino.com.
slide 26. So we've reached the question and comments um, section of our meeting. Again, questions and comments can be entered into the chat feature for the team to address directly. If you'd like to ask your questions verbally, you can go ahead and click the hand raised icon and we can go ahead and unmute you. Okay, so one of the questions we have says, how many feet are the bike lanes and are the are they going to be green throughout the project limits? Um, Andres, you wanna take that question? Yes, so the bike lanes will be five feet um, and there will be bike lanes uh, on both sides of the road, north and southbound along 40th. Um, however, the green bike lanes per se will be only at the conflict points, uh, points in which we're anticipating to see interaction between um, the vehicles and the bicyclists. Yeah, I think it's worth adding to Andres that uh, this project is also going to, uh, when we're finished, there's going to be continuous sidewalks also on both sides of the street uh, from Sterling all the way to Griffin. So you'll have Continuous sidewalks. Uh, currently, there are not continuous sidewalks uh, along this corridor on both sides. And then you will also have the, the bike lanes uh, on both sides of the streets continuous from, from Sterling all the way to Griffin. Another question says, what hours uh, does the, uh, the contractor plan on working? Um, Andres, you wanna take that question? Yes, so the contractor must follow the municipal goals of City of Hollywood and um, City of Dania Beach, which allow for working hours between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. Um, however, our contractor right now is anticipating working between the hours of 7 and 3.30 p.m. Primarily on weekdays, is that correct? Correct, yes, Monday through Friday. Again, your questions can be, and uh, I'm sorry, your, if you'd like to ask your question verbally, um, you can click the hand raised icon and that'll notify us um, and we can go ahead and mute you. Another question we have is, is there a possibility that lanes will be closed on the weekend? So the contractor can work weekends um, and those weekend hours that they were allowed to work would be between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And right now at this point, we're not anticipating any weekend work. However, there is that possibility and that possibility remains. Um, but we don't we don't ex we don't expect that. It's also that worth good. mentioning too that. Oh, go ahead. I was no, going to no, say. Was... Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to add. I was just going to add that uh, you know it's it, the po the possibility of lane closures. I mean, there's there's possibility that you won't see lane closures every day on the on the weekdays as well. So. Uh, you know, that there's always a possibility that you'll see the lane closures, but this doesn't mean there's going to be lane closures every single day. Correct. And even if lane closures are allowed on the weekends, it doesn't mean that the contractor is going to utilize them. But there is that, like Matt said, the possibility, the contract plans allow for it. Right. Yeah. Even if he works on the weekends, that's not, that's not even saying then that he's going to, uh, 
use land closures, but uh, the possibility exists, yes. Uh, what is the time frame of the project? Um, I can take that one. Um, so construction is starting um, this Friday, August 6th, and then contract time is 466 calendar days, and that doesn't take in, uh, into account any weather or holidays that might be added to the contract, which will put us around um, spring 2023. So that's the time frame that we're looking at right now. So I guess we'll wait just a few more seconds, see any more questions roll in. Oh, how do residents receive updates for the project? That's a great question. Um, you can email myself, Rebecca, and I can add you to the project distribution list. So one of the things you'll receive is the weekly traffic impact report that's sent every Friday. Um, also too, if we have any uh, detours or uh, any construction updates, that gets sent directly to the project uh, list as well. Um, you can email myself. Also, throughout construction, um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We're very happy to help and answer your questions, and, and we're a tool for you guys to, to use. Just gonna give a few more seconds, see if we have any more questions roll in. If not, we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so moving on from the question and answer session, moving on to slide 27. So throughout the project, as I mentioned before, questions or co uh, comments can be submitted uh, via email or phone. My contact information is listed here on the screen. I'm the community outreach specialist. My email is rguerrero at corradino.com and my phone number is 954-940-7605. We also have our construction project manager, Matthew May. His phone number is matthew.may at fdot.state.fl.us and his phone number is 954-940-7519. Also our senior project engineer, uh, Andres Diaz, his email is adiaz at castilloeng.com and his phone number is 305-400-8240. And then lastly, we have the City of Dania Beach project manager and their email is engineering at daniabeachfl.gov uh, and phone number is 954-924-6808 extension 3883. So skipping slide 28. Well, this just concludes the, our meeting. Um, thank you so much for everyone who joined. Um, please feel free to contact us throughout construction. We're here to answer your questions. Um, and thank you again.